Here we're going to talk about symmetry adapted wave functions. You may recall when we were talking about various theories of bonding, the Lewis dot structure, valence bond, and so on, we had this fairly simple idea, for example, bonding in oxygen. We would have an sp2 hybrid orbital come out here and then this is on the oxygen. Here's the hydrogen which you would have a 1s orbital here and then these would overlap in order to form a bond. Well that's uh, good for an introductory chemistry picture but it turns out that ta -da, only atomic orbitals with the same symmetry representation will combine to form molecular orbitals. Uh, in other words these are symmetry adapted uh, should be atomic orbitals. So before we go to the simple picture, um, we have to realize that, oh, water, and here's another sp2 hybrid coming out here. So this is a hydrogen, here's a hydrogen. Water belongs to C2V symmetry. So that before we actually can combine these atomic orbitals in the valence bond picture to form bonds, we have to make sure that the atomic orbitals we're combining have to have the same symmetry. In other words, um, the, another way to say that is that each uh, atomic orbital uh, that we're combining here has to combine with the same symmetry of the atomic orbital on the other atom in order to form a bond. And the way we're going to do that is to combine the um, atomic orbitals in such a way that they have the symmetry of the molecule, then look at the irreducible representation of those atomic orbitals. And only orbitals, or only atomic orbitals that have the same irreducible representation will overlap and combine to form a molecular orbital. So uh, there's recipes uh, to determine how you combine the atomic orbitals in such a way uh, before you actually form the overlap and the bonding orbitals as in uh, the valence bond picture or the molecular orbital picture. These are formulas and not too useful, it's just a recipe. And I posted online a pre uh, procedure you use uh, to form these symmetry adapted linear combination of atomic orbitals and you can follow that with water. Let's do a couple examples here. What is an A1 uh, symmetry adapted linear combination of atomic orbitals? made from the 1s atomic orbitals of uh, in ammonia. All right, well let's take a look at ammonia. Ammonia recall, uh, here I'll draw it here so you have to imagine that these H's are going into the uh, plane of the paper. Okay, and this ammonia is sticking up out towards you. Ammonia is 3C3V symmetry. All right, so let's just take, and that means it has a C3 axis coming right out towards you, and you can rotate 120 degrees around this way. So that H will go there, that H will go there, and so on. All right, now let's just take, say, a 1s atomic orbital on H. That's all we're going to consider. Not going to see the molecule or any other atomic orbitals. And let's take this one here. So we're just going to consider this is a 1s on that hydrogen and there's the center of the molecule but we're taking away the nitrogen and the hydrogens over here because we're not going to consider them. Let's do a C3 rotation uh, do C3 symmetry operation here so there's our center of the molecule what this has done is rotated 120 degrees so now we're down here at 1s. Alright so if we compare this initially and after the symmetry operation what we find is oh these are not the same this s has moved down here for example if we do a c3v up here in this rotation we get the h is moving around but after that symmetry operation we still have the same structure of the molecule if we apply a c3 rotation just to the 1s orbital we don't get the uh, 1s back again or we don't get the 1s in the same position it was in. In other words, that is a different structure from this. So just a 1, 1s orbital on hydrogen is not, doesn't belong, or does not um, have the right symmetry in terms of C3 symmetry, which you have to have, in a C3v symmetry, which you have to have because this is the orbitals on this um, molecule. The orbitals that you're going to combine to form molecular orbitals have to have the same symmetry. This just 1s does not. Let's just try to find a combination that will work. Here's a center. Here's our 1s. Well, let's add 
Let's take all three hydrogen 1s orbitals and add them together. So now our uh, atomic orbital is uh, the 1s on hydrogen 1 plus plus the 1s on hydrogen 2 plus the 1s on hydrogen 3. So we're going to take all three together. Now if we do a C3 rotation operation here, what we'll have is, well, the same thing. We have 1s here. So when you rotate this, dot, 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 120 degrees, we'll have a 1s here, and we'll have a 1s here. So if we combine the individual atomic orbitals on hydrogen to form this uh, sum, that obeys the C3 uh, symmetry operation. You start there, end there, this is the same as that. All right, so that's one combination that we can do. So we add up all these atomic orbitals, and that's the atomic orbital that we're going to use in order to combine with various orbitals in nitrogen. So that's what that means when you um, do a uh, symmetry adapted linear combination of atomic orbitals. And that was just an example for the 1s. Now if you read the online notes, what uh, we did was uh, there was to actually figure out for water what kind of symmetry adapted linear combination of atomic orbitals you have to have in order to have various symmetries. And we'll answer this question in just a second. Here it is. Uh, you can refer to the online notes. What we're doing is ta starting with uh, hydrogen and there's a 1s on the hydrogen uh, and there are two of them because there are two hydrogens in water. And we ta start with the oxygen. There's a 1s on the oxygen, a 2s on the oxygen, and a uh, 2p on the oxygen, but there are three of them, px, py, pz. So there's a total of two, three, four, five, six, seven atomic orbitals in, uh, that we're going to consider in H2O. And now, as we said, similar to the case for ammonia, for water, we can't just combine like a 1s one, one, one on the hydrogen and with, say, a 2p, 1, 2p on the oxygen. We have to make sure the symmetry is right before we actually start combining them. Well, here is how you combine them here, and this is for the various symmetries A1, uh, B1, B2. B2. Note that there is no A2 symmetry. There's no way that you can combine these seven orbitals in order to get A2 symmetry. A2 symmetry, by the way, that means that the um, irreducible representation, this is A2 for C2V, which is the water molecule. You cannot get the irreducible representation of any combination of those atomic orbitals in water to give the A2 irreducible representation. You can get the A1, the B1, and B2 by these various things. I right, refer to the online notes for, exam uh, for that. Um, now what we want to do, now that we have the symmetries of the orbitals, we want to see what actually happens here. And note that if you start with seven atomic orbitals here, uh, just these atomic orbitals centered on one atom, you have to end up with seven linear combinations. Uh, that's the conservation of orbital, number of orbitals property. All right, so let's uh, reproduce this here. Let's do um, one, of these, one of these bonding molecular orbital things. So let's put the two hydrogens over here, and let's put the oxygen here. Now, as we said, and we're going to label the orbitals by their symmetry. Okay, that uh, seems to be a good way to do it. So let's say this, remember, for the hydrogen. Let's go back and take a look here. For the hydrogen, there's this one here. It's A1 symmetry, which is you're adding the two orbitals the on atom 1 and atom 2. And then there's this B1 symmetry in which you're subtracting the two. Atom uh, 1s on atom 1 minus 1s on atom 2. So there's the two hydrogen orbitals that we've just added and subtracted. All right. So let's uh, put those in this diagram. We probably would expect that the A1, which represents the 1s plus 1s, might be lower energy, but maybe not. We can actually put those orbitals in the um, uh, Schrodinger equation try to solve their energies. And here's the one for 
B1. This was the 1s minus 1s. All right, so those are the two uh, atomic orbitals on hydrogen, on the two hydrogens. We're considering those together. It has A1 symmetry where we've added the two and B1 symmetry where we've subtracted the two. Now, the remaining five orbitals um, here are the 1s on oxygen, the 2s on oxygen, and the three 2p's on oxygen. And they have A1 symmetry and B1 symmetry and B2 symmetry. Okay, or more precisely, they're represented by the irreducible representation B2, B1, and A1. All right, so let's put those in the molecular orbital diagram here. We expect that this was the A1 for the 1s. We expect 1s to be tightly bound, lower energy, and so on. Now we'll look for uh, the A1 in the 2s. We'll put that one there. And then we got the p orbitals up here. We'll say we have an A1 p orbital with A1 irreducible representation. We got a B1 and we got a B2. The A1 was the 2pz. All right, just to uh, refresh our memories here. Uh, all right, so the A1, oh yes, 2pz, there's that one. We did these two, the A1s of the S's. As you expect, those just single S's would have A1 symmetry, all ones, nothing changes sign with an S orbital. And then we have the B1 for the PY and the B2 for the PX. Okay, so let's put those in the diagram here. This is the B1 was the 2PY and the B2 was a 2PX. All right, so now we have these atomic orbitals here and here we have atomic orbitals which are symmetry adapted atomic orbitals and now we're going to combine them all right here's the a1 on here that can combine with a1 a1 or a1 well uh, if you look at energies this one is going to combine for the one that's closest in energy which will be that so we're going to put a bonding and an antibonding here so this a1 will combine with this A1, and if you have two atomic orbitals, you're going to make two molecular orbitals. And we'll call this lowercase a1 and lowercase a1, which denotes, oh, maybe we should put a star here for antibonding, uh, which denotes the symmetry. All right, now we got the B1. The B1 is closest in energy to the P's, and there is no other B1, so it has to do that. So here we'll combine the B1 with the B1, to form this bonding orbital and we'll put a B1 up here that will combine with that B1 will combine with that and then you're left over this B2 and that will just be a non-bonding atomic orbital and then of course these carry over here they're not bonding so that's that and it's not bonding so that's that so there is the molecular orbital diagram, so that's atomic, atomic, combining to form molecular orbitals. And then you start putting in electrons. But note that some of these don't have the right symmetry. So B2, there's no combination over here that has B2 symmetry, so that has to be, the 2px has to be a non-bonding pair of electrons. And then um, the A1s uh, combine this way. All right, so let's now put in some electrons. There are, um, uh, what do we say, uh, two, uh, let's see, two plus n. So we're using the 1s and the 2s. So oxygen has eight electrons, and hydrogen, each one has uh, one electron, so that'll be two electrons. So we have a total of 10 electrons we could put in this molecular orbital diagram. Let's rewrite this over here uh, so that we can uh, be a little more clear. So there is that and that. Those are non-bonding. And then we have the A1, B1, non-bonding, A1 and B1. Okay, so this is just the uh, atomic orbital. This is A1 for the 1s. This is A1. This is molecular orbital A1, molecular orbital B1. This is the non-bonding electron pair from the oxygen. We'll put that over here, B2. And I'm, I didn't want to write in there, so I could put the electrons in there. 
<laughs> okay, so uh, would we say this was bonding A1, this is bonding B1, this is antibonding B1 star, this is antibonding A1 star. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we got seven there. And we said ten electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's the molecular orbital diagram for bonding in H2O. All right, ten electrons, and it looks like two of those electrons are in a non-bonding orbital, and uh, four electrons are in bonding orbitals. And of course we have these down here which are also non-bonding orbitals. So that's how one takes into consideration um, symmetry when you're talking about uh, combining atomic orbitals in order to make molecular orbitals.